Hey there, YouTube, and welcome to Ask a Maestro. Today's question comes from YouTube commenter Roy J.S., who asks, How have electronic instruments been included in orchestral music? Electronic instruments have a long history stretching back into the 19th century, and from the very earliest days of their existence, classical composers have tried to incorporate them into the orchestra. The most famous example of one of these early electronic instruments being used in an orchestral setting comes from the French composer Olivier Messiaen. The piece is called the Tarangalila Symphony, and the instrument used is called the Onde Martineau. Maurice Martineau experimented with this instrument during the 1920s and finally patented it in 1928. You see, it's a real musical instrument without string or wind. The sound is produced electrically by means of radio valve, but it's not mechanical. It is a trumpet and echo. And bird, if you will. It's no wonder that an instrument that could so convincingly replicate the sound of bird call would fascinate the composer Olivier Messiaen. He himself was an amateur ornithologist, and he spent long amounts of time transcribing birdsong, and almost all of his music includes some of this birdsong in some fashion or another. Now, another one of these early electronic instruments that sounds a lot like the Onde Martineau, but is controlled in a completely different manner, is the theremin. This instrument was also developed during the 1920s by a Russian inventor named Leon Thiermien. Now, just a little sidebar about the life of Leon Tiermien. After he developed the theremin in the 1920s, he was abducted by the Soviet spy program and forced to do research and development, and he ended up developing several eavesdropping devices that were used against the United States during the Cold War. The first piece written for theremin and orchestra was Joseph Schillinger's Airphonic Suite. Schillinger is not a composer that most of us have heard of, but he has a pretty important place in the history of music since he was one of George Gershwin's principal teachers. And so this Airphonic Suite has a sort of Hollywood Broadway sound to it. <laughs> Schillinger originally hailed from Russia, and he wasn't the only Russian composer to get in early on the action writing for theremin and orchestra. A composer who many of us probably are familiar with, Dmitry Shostakovich, included the theremin in one of his early film scores. And just another little sidebar here. If you are a fan of Shostakovich's music and you're not familiar with his film scores, then you know nothing, because that is really the foundation for all the rest of his music. But I digress. This film is called Odna, which in this case means alone, and it's from 1931. Shostakovich uses the theremin only one time in this score, but it's a very intriguing passage where he blends the high ethereal sound of the theremin with the flutes and the woodwinds of the orchestra, and then pits it against very creepy kind of brass figures. Now, the theremin never really gained a foothold in the orchestra, but there are some composers who still use it today. Most notably, I think, is the Turkish composer Fazil Say, who used the theremin in his second symphony called Mesopotamia. In this symphony, Say has described the use of the theremin as representing an angel looking over Mesopotamia, and he sort of pits it against the much earthier sounds of the two other solo instruments, the bass flute and the bass recorder. <laughs> 
The use of these electronic instruments sort of fell out of favor by the 1950s and 60s, when composers who were interested in incorporating electronic music mainly turned to the use of pre-recorded sound on tape. In the 1980s, when you had the development of commercial synthesizers, certain composers started to use them in the orchestra, notably Michael Dougherty and Michael Torkey. But if I'm being totally honest, when I hear these pieces, I barely notice that they're there. Now, one place where you really do notice the inclusion of keyboard synthesizers is in Broadway orchestration. These instruments came in in the 1970s and since then have really taken over the sound of the Broadway pit. Well, John, at last, we see each other plain. Monsieur Le Maire, you'll wear a different chain. <laughs> and of course, people have tried to write for electric guitar and orchestra. There are some concertos. Most of them, I would say, are pretty unfortunate. <laughs> Now, in our own time, it's no surprise that musicians have started to blend the latest digital technologies with the orchestra. DJ instruments like drum machines and turntables and looping pedals. My personal favorite artist who incorporates this kind of electronica with the orchestra is, of course, the Icelandic singer-songwriter known as Björk. But the most prominent classical composer who has done this kind of work has got to be Mason Bates, who in 2011 wrote a piece called Mothership for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. The final thing that I have to say on this subject is that these days, basically every orchestra, in America at least, regularly incorporates electronic instruments into their concert presentations. Almost every orchestra has a pops series, and when an orchestra plays pops music, there will be synthesizers, electric guitars, electric basses, and in fact the entire orchestra will be miked and electronically amplified. So that is our brief history of the inclusion of electronic music in the world of orchestral music. Thank you so much to Roy JS for asking this question. The rest of you, please leave your questions in the comments. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, go play an instrument or sing a song. And until then, goodbye everyone.